Hi, Royals fans. This is Matthew Bryan Avenue. I'm here just to say, come down, enjoy the show, and we'll put it on for the city. I started playing basketball at the age of four. Um, as a four-year-old, I didn't think this this round round ball would take me all over the world and see um, some of the most amazing places. Um, like I've played in um, Asia, um, Europe, obviously, obviously North America, the States, South America, um, in the Middle East. So I've played all over the place. Um, got to see some amazing things, and if you do things the right way, um, I think basketball treats you, treats you right. If you treat the game right, it'll treat you right. So. Like I said, the NBA um, isn't for everybody. Um, you gotta think of it this way, and this is how I've always thought about it. There's only 450 places in the NBA. There's billions of people playing basketball in the world. So for you to make it to be that 450 people is actually a crazy thing to do. Um, but it doesn't mean there isn't basketball everywhere else. And obviously, um, most kids or, or majority of kids dreams to play basketball um, is to make it to the NBA but if you don't it doesn't mean that you can't have a successful career it doesn't mean that you can um, use the game to to, um, to enjoy experiences that you might not be able to experience if you if you didn't play the game and um, there's a lot of um, people um, I think the best example is probably like a uh, Rudy Fernandez um, Spanish national team who was with the Blazers and had offers to go back to the NBA but he decided to go back home and play in Spain. It's like you want to be a role player in the NBA or be a superstar at home so um, there's different perks for different people. For me, um, the BBL has been frowned upon for a few years now um, about the level of basketball. Um, it's something that I wanted to help change and be a part of and with a new team, especially being in London. Um, I have my son um, here based in South London as well. Um, things were unfolding off the court um, for it to be a good place for me. Um, also, just thinking about the future and life after basketball, I think um, a lot of things that the Royals are doing off the court um, could be successful for me in business and the stuff that I'm doing or I want to do um, life after basketball. Being a Royal is, means a lot to me, um, just being able to come home, um, playing in London, uh, specifically South London. Um, I grew up maybe 10 minutes away from Crystal Palace, so um, it's really a homecoming for myself. Obviously, my accent's changed over the years, but when I do go to the States, they're like, you're so English, it's crazy. And then I let everybody know. Um, when everybody, you know, you get you start talking smack and stuff during games, and I'm going like, how are you going to let this little British kid bust your ass? Like, it's just how we are. Um, so I know um, I do rep London, rep England, rep Great Britain to the fullest. So when I am on the court, people know where I'm from, and it's just, to try and change everybody's perception, not just Americans, but Europeans and whatnot. And I think the goal for us, um, I know people tend to shy away from saying goals and whatnot, but I'll tell you, I'm here to win. I've come here to win, I came home to win. Um, I think that the squad that the Royals have put together is um, championship worthy in this league. And the whole thing was, we can do that. So we've got uh, steps on the ladder. This is just the first step putting the team together and winning the BBR, that's just the first step. Next step is to do um, to get into Europe and, and, and show Europeans that there is talent in Britain and if we have a great British core, we can show that we can play with anybody. I think it's um, a thing that's been going on for a few years now, that they've tried to have a team and in, in, um, another team in London in the BBR. Um, I heard rumblings about it going on while I was abroad still. Um, and I'd actually spoke with Namo about it and he just kind of acted like nothing was going on. What are you talking about? Where are you hearing this? But um, you kind of find out very fast um, what's going on and it kind of got fast-tracked once um, Leeds was up the league. And from then, me and Namo had been in a few conversations, nothing big, um, maybe for the future, but not for this year. But um, certain things kind of played in, in the team's favor and to do with the league and stuff and um, it, it became an option and 
with some of the offers I was getting, I wasn't um, completely happy right away. So um, it became an option and ended up making it happen. Coming out of school, um, I was projected to get drafted in the second round. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. Uh, my son was born that summer, so instead of waiting, because it was the year of the lockout, um, instead of waiting until the NBA started again, I decided to go to Europe. I ended up going to Turkey um, to make money to, to obviously provide for my family. The NBA was my dream and still is probably my dream, um, but I think at the age I am now, I need more of a guarantee than I am to go to a summer league, an open tryout where you're trying to... Um, you know, impress guys that may not be as interested in you now as in five years ago. The NBA Summer League is what people don't understand sometimes is like they look at the guys that are in the NBA and think um, that kind of circle or tight knit group is, um, is key. I don't think it's actually key. What, what people don't understand is because I went to school in the States, high school and college, all those guys I played against throughout before they made it to the NBA. So guys that were, we played against at high school, some of the guys that I played, like I played, I was in the same league as Michael Beasley, per se, in, in high school. Um, and then you go off to college and you're playing against Clay Thompson and James Harden and Russell Westbrook and Kevin Love and you know what I mean? The list goes on. So it's guys that know me. Um, like I said, NBA Summer League is just another opportunity of making it into the league, but I will go to NBA Summer League and I'm walking through a, ho a hallway and I hear somebody scream NBA. I turn around and it's Clay Thompson. And it's oh, what's up? You know what I mean? These guys that we played against. So everybody kind of has a mutual respect for each other. It's not just about talent and who's a superstar, who's not a superstar. It's just guys um, all respect you because they, they know the grind, whether you make it or not, that... Um, we all put in the same amount of effort, same amount of work, and guys um, still respect you from, like I said, from playing against each other in college. Going from a guy as a freshman that didn't play major minutes um, all the way through, um, being on championship teams in college where I wasn't a major guy, and then you know working my way up to becoming a major, a major component of a winning team and. And being able to play like we spoke about with guys like Isaiah Thomas, Justin Holiday, uh, Terrence Ross, um, all NBA guys, Quincy Pondexter, just you know being able to play at such a high level with, with very talented players and being vocal and one of the main guys on the team is is very memorable. And um, as a pro, um, I think each each championship is different. Um, I've gone on teams where we we're expected to win. I've gone on teams where. We weren't expected to win. Um, I've joined a team late um, where the talent level was there, but they wasn't doing their best. And after myself joining the team, it was enough to help us push to a championship. So each one is different, but they're all special in their own right. Um, a lot of people say um, I have the utmost confidence in myself uh, when I'm on the court and um, borderline arrogant. I, I'm not going to shy away from it. That's what people say, and I don't mind it. It's in this game, and as an athlete in general, I think you got to have that type of confidence in yourself and your abilities to be able to succeed. Um, you never hear you, the, the greatest. Obviously, I'm not comparing myself to them, but the greatest are Michael Jordans, the LeBron Jameses, the uh, Kobe Bryants. You, you, you hear them say it all the time. Um, I'm the best player in the game. I'm this, I'm that. It's not you're telling me, I'm letting you know that I'm this. And I think that's what you gotta have to be successful um, in, the, in the sport of basketball, but in sports in general. So for myself, it's just bringing that type of attitude and, and letting these guys know that um, it's not just what you see the 30 times that you see me on the court during game, but day in and day out. Um, bring, in, bring in the same attitude to practice, wanting to win every competition in practice. Anybody that's ever played with me has said that I'm not a shooter, but if we're in a shooting drill, I'm going to win the shooting drill. Uh, wherever it be sprints, wherever it be first day of preseason, we had sprints, and I'm the tallest guy, second tallest guy on the team, but I'm out there trying to win and be first. But that's just a different mindset and different attitude than um, guys that haven't played at different levels might not see, but you gotta let them know that if you, this is what it takes to win. You excited to get started? Definitely, definitely. I was just having, having a conversation with AJ about it. Like, it seems like we've been here for like a month already, and it's only been like two weeks. So, like, it just feels like it's dragging on. But I think the 
the closer and closer we get to that first game, uh, even though it's not home, but the first, closer and closer we get to that first game of the season, like the anticipation is going to build up, the buzz is building up, and, and we're going to have a good year.